Hi, my name is Chris Martin and I'm an applications engineer here at Meta Machine. I hope that you found the rest of today's sessions useful in the architecture, engineering and construction software. There's definitely some exciting features to delve into. In this final session of today, we're going to be taking a look at AutoCAD 2025 and the new features that are available in that software. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So the first new feature we're going to be looking at is the update to smart, smart blocks in AutoCAD 2025. So smart blocks were first introduced um, in the previous year's release um, with block placement and replacement. So this is an engine that basically learns about your block placement relative to other geomet geometry in the model. Um, and a tool that also replaces blocks with similar blocks from your library um, or recently placed blocks. So in AutoCAD 2025, the smart blocks have been further enhanced to include additional options to streamline your workflows. So one of the first um, options that we have available to us is the search and convert, which basically uh, converts geometry the same shape to a new or existing block just by highlighting one of the instances. So I can demonstrate that for you here. On the, I've got this uh, floor plan of a supermarket. So I can just select some of the geometry. You'll see it's not currently a block. I can highlight any of these lines. So I just highlight some of the geometry and then use the B convert command. So you can see just by highlighting one of those um, instances that all of the other um, instances that contain the same geometry are highlighted in the model. If I want to, I can uh, deselect any of them. Do not include them in this um, selection. You'll see in the command line the quantity changes. But for the purposes of this, I want to keep all of them. So I just need to press enter. And then it comes up with this convert um, dialog box where I can type in uh, a, I can either use an existing block um, to add all of these instances to, or I can create a new block, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to say this is two by two rack. And I will uh, convert, and I'm happy to use the center of the geometry as its base point. So now I can just press convert. And you'll see now if I hover over one, one of these instances, bring up my properties window, um, that these are now all uh, blocks. So the second uh, feature when it comes to smart blocks is uh, the object detection um, command. So this is currently a technology preview, meaning that uh, it's still being worked on by Autodesk and that it's only available to um, su subscribers to the full AutoCAD, so not AutoCAD LT. So the way this works is that it looks in a drawing for objects that can be converted to blocks. So objects um, that have the same or similar geometry. Um, so to access this, we go to either the insert tab and select detect or use detect uh, the detect um, command. I'm just going to Press it here, seeing as I'm here. And AutoCAD will come up with this um, pop-up window, which saying it's which says it's having a look at the drawing um, just to detect um, elements that can be converted to blocks. It's now finished, saying that it's detected objects and that there's 94 sets and 181 instances. So I can just select review objects. And 
you see the first set that it's discovered is my doors. So it's discovered that all of these doors contain the same geometry. And as they're not currently blocks, I could um, change them to uh, blocks if I wanted to. So it's just another way of um, carrying out the convert command, I suppose, instead of knowing what you want to convert, you're just asking AutoCAD to find um, objects to convert for you. I can cycle through any of these um, sets to have a look what, what else it, it's found. So you'll see it's found these um, toilets that can all be converted. Um, we're just going to go with the doors for now. So I just need to select the convert button um, on the toolbar when I'm happy with um, what is picked up. And again, it will come up with this same dialog box as when we were doing the search and convert. Uh, and I can just type in a block name. Uh, I'm going to use single door. And then convert again. And now that I've converted the um, that set of blocks, it's been removed from the detection to allow me to um, change any of the other sets that have been detected to blocks as well if I wanted to. So I'm just going to do it for those doors so I can close the, the review. There we go. So, so it's picked up. So these single doors, which are of um, this size, same size as this one that I've got selected, have been converted. As you'll see, I've got another one here, which I could convert as well. So yeah, a couple, couple of different um, ways that machine learning is uh, enhancing your workflows in AutoCAD through um, smart blocks. So the next new feature we're going to be looking at is Activity Insights. So Activity Insights has been around for a couple of years now. But again, um, AutoCAD 2025 brings new activity types and more detail about them to help monitor who's been doing what on your projects. So we can access activity types if you don't, if you don't know by typing activity insights open into the command line. And to close the properties window. And you can see we've now got uh, information about the different versions that have been saved. So this replaces the DWG history command. So when a file is saved on cloud storage provider, such as um, Box, Google Drive, Dropbox, it appears on your activity insights. So I select compare. Then I can compare that version to my current version. So AutoCAD will highlight um, any of the changes um, with a revision cloud and whether the geometry is green or red will tell you whether that uh, geometry is only in the current drawing or if it's only in the drawing that's being compared. So if I now carry out a purge as well, for example, So when my file is reopened, I've got um, information about the purge. So um, as well as telling me that there's been a purge, it gives me a bit of activity as to what um, information has been purged from the drawing. So the version activity function has also been extended to cover um, Autodesk Construction Cloud Docs. So in the case of ACC, um, this file has already been saved to uh, the cloud location. You'll see at the bottom here, version 10. So if I now carry out a save, um, 
from the toolbar. Then in the Activity Insights, it will tell me that there's been a save. And then um, shortly afterwards, I, I can go into my docs and you'll see that it's already processing the new version within docs. And then from that, I will be, when that new version appears on my Activity Insights, once it's processed, then I'll be able to um, compare it to my previous versions directly within uh, the AutoCAD software. You also have the option from the home screen, so from your start tab, to be able to view Activity Insights. So just by selecting the three dots, then you've got the option to view Activity Insights without even opening the file. See here I can view it from the home screen if I wanted to, and likewise for any of these other files as well. Another feature which I find really useful in the new AutoCAD is the ability to patch an area without having any pre-existing geometry in the drawing. So in previous versions of AutoCAD, you were required to have some pre-existing geometry to act as a boundary for your hatch. Now to uh, improve workflows, make things a bit quicker, in AutoCAD 2025, we can just create a hatch over any part of our drawing using rectangles, circles, a polyline um, that acts as a path, or using one of the original options that we have available. So carry out our hatch command. And then, as well as the original options, pick internal point and select objects, we have the new options of rectangle and circle. And we can also uh, set a um, in mode, sorry, not settings. We can create, use a path rather than an area if we want to, but we've currently got area selected. And then if I'm just creating a couple of rectangles, I'll just type R. And I just need to draw from um, opposite corner to an opposite corner to create my rectangle. And I'll do another one over here. So I'm creating a, an exclusion zone for the freezer doors clearance. I don't want anything else to be in. And then I'll just alter my scale slightly so you can see Patch pattern, and there we go. It's as easy as that. So one of the most exciting features in recent years in AutoCAD, if you're working with multiple stakeholders across multiple disciplines, is the ability to carry out markup, import, and assist. So this was first introduced in AutoCAD 2023, um, and it allows you to bring your physical red line markups directly from your PDF viewer applications, such as um, Adobe or Microsoft Edge, directly into your model as a trace layer. And then from that, AutoCAD recognizes the written feedback that's on those um, PDFs and gives you options to insert text directly from um, what's been written on a red line markup to uh, into the drawing, any revision clouds that have been added to the drawing, they can uh, AutoCAD recognizes them and will try to duplicate their, their shape. Um, so since that was introduced two years ago, um, AutoCAD has been uh, enhanced um, to improve those features, which we'll have a look at now. So in this example, I'm going to import the PDF markup as I would in AutoCAD 2023 or 2024 by first selecting the Collaborate tab and then um, going to Markup Import or typing Markup Import into the command line. And then navigating to wherever I've got my markup saved 
I'm going to use this one at the bottom and select open. Um, if the PDF is from a direct export, the placement sh uh, the placement location should align with your drawing in AutoCAD. Um, if for whatever reason it comes in um, skewif, um, not in the right place, then you have the option to move, align, rotate and scale if you want to. But I can see that this looks like the right position so I can accept that placement. And then the first thing to note uh, when it comes to updates in 2025 is that the trace uh, toolbar has been improved to be more clear when you're working within a trace layer. Now it's as simple as either you're editing the trace or you're editing the drawing. So the settings toolbar for trace is also, um, is also pinnable as well. That's a new feature in 2025. So Previously, when you move the cursor away, like it does now, that would close off. But if you wanted to, you can pin this toolbar and then it will remain um, in position for you to change your settings. The trace window can also be used like a palette. So they can be um, locked to the side of my working area. Um, ref edit is also now enabled in trace mode so you, if you wanted to you can um, edit hex refs or blocks directly within the current drawing and also apply uh, mark offsets to the hex ref. So within the trace environment itself we also have some new we have some new options. So you'll see here I have an area marked um, in my red line markup that is not uh, rectangular. So to add markups to uh, from my red line markups to my drawing, I just need to go to the drawing tab. While I was talking just then, um, AutoCAD was um, recognizing the markups um, that have been loaded in. Um, so it's you'll see it's picked up. If I zoom out a little bit, it's picked up the red line markups with the blue squares, blue dash squares around them. And now I have the ability to just select any of them. And now in AutoCAD 2025, as well as making a rectangular revision cloud around, I can also make a poly polygonal one. So AutoCAD will try to duplicate the shape as best it can. And you'll see it's done a pretty good job of um, replicating the boundary uh, around that was marked for this area for removal. Also add multiple text strings from a markup to one conversion in AutoCAD. So I can demonstrate this using this drawing. So the first thing um, that's worth noting is that you need to make sure you've got the right viewport active. You'll see why that's important in a minute. But um, for my E and notes, etc., at the bottom, I've got a different viewport. So I just need to double click in the viewport, and the toolbar will sort of snap to the viewport you're working within, which is quite useful. So you'll see I've got down the bottom here no three notes which have been picked up as separate. Um, pieces of text by AutoCAD because probably when they were made in Adobe or Microsoft Edge, they were made using three different text um, text notes. So uh, AutoCAD has recognized them as three separate ones. But for this example, I want all of them to be included in the same note under note number 19. So what I can do is I can first select the border of the first one. The mark persist dialog box will pop up. And I just need to select this new option here, which is select markup to add. Now I can select the other two markups and press enter. And then 
without me having to type that, all of that text is added to the um, text to be copied. And if I need to, I can just make some slight um, adjustments to it. I'll just add some um, dashes for uh, bullet points. And then I'm going to select up update existing text. So the text um, style that's been used for the rest of my sheet notes is retained and it adds this note onto the end of my list. So if I select update existing text, and I've got this um, info to be provided regarding site regs note. So I I'm going to um, replace that. By selecting replace, you can either append to add the note to the existing one or just replace it completely. And then select replace. Then just make sure it, the text is showing as I want it to. And once, I'm, once I've made the edit, click outside of the text box and you'll see that, that text has been added um, to the end of my sheet notes using the same text style, etc. So nice, quick, easy way of doing that. So staying on the subject of markups. AutoCAD 2025 brings some further integration with the Autodesk Construction Cloud environment. Um, so markups made to a PDF using the native tools in Autodesk Construction Cloud Docs can now be synced directly to AutoCAD, which makes incorporating changes in the model easier. So rather than having to work alongside a sheet with changes, Markups can be viewed directly within the trace workspace in AutoCAD. So to do this, um, I've got a PDF which I've already got uploaded to my um, docs um, workspace in the Autodesk Construction Cloud. So I'm just going to open up this PDF. So this is a direct export from um, AutoCAD. And then I can use some of the native markup tools in the construction cloud to do some um, to create some red line markups directly within uh, docs. But the benefit of this is that um, they can be used to collaborate on um, your other construction cloud modules rather than um, say if they were done in any of the third party applications. So I'm just going to create a couple of markups. Um, I'm just going to add one to this area here, just to check the access between the two rooms. You'll see if I select edit, you've got a few nice options when it comes to um, how the markups are drawn. I'm going to make that cloud a bit thinner. And then I can add a text note as well. You've got options to um, do some manual um, markups. You can also use various different callouts, text boxes to create markups. I'm going to do one more to check this room number. Text a little bit smaller. And we'll just add another revision cloud as well. 
it's quite um, intuitive to use the markup tools in Auto uh, in Auto Desktop as well. So uh, one thing to ensure um, before you try and sync any markups with uh, AutoCAD is that the markups are published in the cloud. So you see currently I have the this little scribble icon, um, which indicates that the markup is not published. So I can just come in here and select any of my markups and then in the workspace, select publish, which has a little crown symbol. And then once I've published all my markups, um, I'll be able to synchronize them in AutoCAD. <clears throat> so uh, to synchronize with AutoCAD, I have to come up to the top of my ribbon here on the right hand side where I've got the three dots and select sync markups to AutoCAD. And then in the new window, I have to select who I'm going to send the markups to. So I'll just send them to myself for the purposes of this. And then any additional comments as required. And press send. And then I'll get a notification saying that um, the markups have been sent to my collaborators. And shortly after, I'll receive an email with a link to import and connect the markups to your AutoCAD file. So if I click on the link in the email, um, import and connect markups to AutoCAD, Then if you don't have um, AutoCAD open, uh, it should start AutoCAD automatically. If it doesn't, then you can just click Start AutoCAD um, in the new browser window. And you want to ensure that um, you've got the AutoCAD file um, associated with the correct version of AutoCAD. Um, so to work on this feature, you need to have your AutoCAD file associated with the 2025 version. So to do that, you just need to ensure if you go into File Explorer, open with, um, that you've got it preset to open with the 2025 version, because otherwise it will come up with uh, an error saying, um, uh, invalid file name. AutoCAD will then try and automatically detect the drawing that's associated with the PDF. Um, if it isn't able to, then you will be able to manually select the drawing. I'm just going to navigate to my where my drawing is saved in the cloud. And then all I need to do is click on the link in the pop-up saying import markup to the current layout. And then it looks like uh, it's picked up the correct placement, so I can accept that. And now I can work as I did before. If I want to, um, it's, AutoCAD has picked up these markups, so I can add any of them to the to the drawing as um, geometry and geometry or text notes in the drawing if necessary. And once the PDF is associated to the drawing, then any changes made to the markup file in Docs uh, will be shown whenever the DWG is next reopened. So you don't have to go through the whole process again of um, reloading the DWG, it will, um, 
it will show those changes when you next open uh, the DWG, which is really handy. AutoCAD 2025 now contains the ability to add Esri maps to your drawing, to add geographic data to your drawing. Previously, this was limited to Bing maps, but now we've got a few different options uh, when it comes to what information we can show uh, relative to what we've got drawn uh, in our project. So let's have a look at this now. So you can see here I've got a, a few housing plots, one of them um, containing a floor plan, um, the main one I'm focusing on in uh, TAME. So to add uh, locational data to my model, I need to go to the Insert tab. And on the right hand side, select Set Location. And you'll see now I've got, as well as Bing Maps, I've got Esri Maps to choose from. So I'm going to have a go at choosing Esri Maps. And then I just need to type in any address information. So, so a postcode, town name, city name, if you're going more general and then you want to zoom in on a specific area. So I'm going to just put in the postcode of um, where we are at Madame Machine in Oxfordshire. So just putting in the postcode. And we'll select next. Now you can choose from any of the coordinate systems um, to assign to your drawing. So I'm just going to go for one that is more familiar with me. So I'm going to use the British National Grid one. And then I'm just going to insert uh, the point at zero, zero on my drawing. And I have to specify the directional angle for uh, North, I'll leave it as the default 90. And um, you'll see that AutoCAD has added that um, satellite imagery for me um, of the surrounding area, which is very useful. And as you can see, um, despite having to do a global search for my location, um, it came up th with the results pretty instantaneously and it's also imported that imagery pretty instantaneously. So I could zoom all the way out and it loads very quickly and I can see the whole, uh, the whole of um, Britain if I wanted to. So nice smooth process there of loading that geometry in. So once I've loaded this Esri map, I can, if I wanted to, I can switch between any of the Esri maps and the Bing maps. Generally, I would say that Esri maps have better um, planimetric options. So you have the options to switch between um, maps that display uh, your major and your minor roads, more sort of um, minimalistic maps in the gray or the in either of the grays, um, and your open street map, which shows more detail on like parklands, um, school building boundaries, that sort of thing. We get more detail in like town centres as well when it comes to uh, businesses, parking, that sort of thing. And then if you wanted to choose one of the more minimalistic ones, then that would just allow you to focus more specifically on uh, what you're working on in your drawing in your area. And then I can capture an area um, using what's in my current viewport. 
So I've got options up here in the ribbon to either capture a rectangular selection box around a specified area. If I select capture area, I would have to then draw my selection. Or if I select capture viewport, then I capture obviously everything that's in uh, my current viewport that can be seen. So where I've got it zoomed out now is quite nice. So I'll select capture viewport and then and then if I then remove my um, location data, then it retains that uh, viewport um, that I just captured a moment ago. So as you can see, despite AutoCAD being around for more than 40 years now and in its 25th official release, there's still a lot going on in terms of investment in the software especially when it comes to your cloud collaboration options, machine learning tools, that sort of thing, which are constantly being enhanced. So I hope that this session has been useful to you in demonstrating some of the key new features in AutoCAD 2025. And if you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to get in contact with us at Man and Machine. Thank you.